Glory to God. Amen. It's so awesome to come together as the body of Christ, isn't it? Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to praise and worship tonight and just sing about our God who is so faithful. Amen. And we welcome everyone here in our live stream audience to Heritage of Faith service tonight. And you're a part of us. We are so thankful for you joining in. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, you're faithful.
Father, we thank you for your promises tonight. We thank you for your promises that you have given to us. We thank you, Father, that your promises are yes and amen. We lay hold of your promises as a reality in our life. We lay hold of the promises that are found in your word. We lay hold of the promises that you have for us concerning our children. We thank you for the promises that you have for us concerning our prosperity. We thank you, Father, for the promises of provision, the promises of healing, 
the promises of restoration, the promises, the promises, hallelujah, that your word is working, promises that angels hearken to our words. We thank you for promises. We thank you for the promises of God at work in our lives. I thank you, Father, for the promises of God. I thank you for the promises of God that that we have declared and we have spoken that these are days of glory, days of flourishing, and days of abounding. We thank you, Father, that it's yes and amen. Thank you, Father, that we add our agreement to what you've declared. We add our agreement to what you declared. We add our agreement to the promises over our lives. We add our agreement to healing that's taking place in our body. We add our agreement to your provision in our lives, that you meet all of our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I thank you, Father, for the, the promises, hallelujah, that we have as tithers. Hallelujah. We add our yes to that. We add our yes to that tonight. Hallelujah. I thank you. Yes and amen. Hallelujah. That the devourer is rebuked for our sake. We say yes and amen. Hallelujah. We thank you that the windows of heaven are open to us. We say yes and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, that we can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. We say yes and amen to that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, that we have a promise. Hallelujah. That the enemy is under our feet. Hallelujah. We say yes and amen to that. That the enemy is defeated. The enemy is defeated. Hallelujah. He's defeated. Hallelujah. In our family. He's defeated in our children. He's defeated in our nation. He's defeated. Hallelujah. That Jesus, hallelujah, defeated him. Hallelujah. Took the keys from him. Hallelujah. And made a show of every principality. Hallelujah. And power openly. Hallelujah. We say yes and amen. We thank you for the promises that we have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you meditate His promises, it should bring joy to your heart. When you meditate His promises, it should it should put a it put, should have put a spring in your step. When you meditate His promises, it should release faith out of your heart and out of your mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. That as we meditate Your promises, as we meditate Your Word day and night, Hallelujah. I thank you that it will make our way prosperous, and we will have good success. We thank you, Father. We thank you for the promises of your word tonight, Lord. And I just release a blessing over them. Father, I just release blessing over them tonight. Why release a blessing over those that are watching by way of internet? Lord, I release the blessing like like Paul did in, in the church of Ephesus. Father, that he prayed, hallelujah, that they would be strengthened with all might in their inner man. Hallelujah. So, Father, I thank you that right now strength is coming. Strength is coming to their inner man. Where they've been depressed, I thank you that they rise above that right now because of the strength in their inner man. Hallelujah. I thank you they're experiencing symptoms in their body. Hallelujah. I thank you they're being strengthened. They're being strengthened. They're being empowered. Hallelujah. They're being equipped. Hallelujah. The anointing of God is working in them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just if, if you, you, you're experiencing any symptoms in your body, just place your hand on, on your spirit man. Hallelujah. 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 And just say this. The anointing is working in me. Hallelujah. Say the anointing is working in me and is restoring me. Hallelujah. 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 The anointing is working. Hallelujah. The anointing is working. Hallelujah. The anointing is working. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The anointing. The burden removing, yoke destroying power of God is working. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is working. Hallelujah, that the anointing, the glory of God is working on your behalf. The glory of God is working on your life. Hallelujah, the glory of God, hallelujah, is making, hallelujah, making crooked places straight. Hallelujah, the anointing, hallelujah, the spirit of God, the glory of God, hallelujah, is going before you. Hallelujah, going before you. Hallelujah, going before you, giving you wisdom, directing your path. Hallelujah. Directing your path into wealthy places. Directing your path into wealthy places. 
Oh, hallelujah. Wealthy places. Hallelujah. I thank you for wealthy places. Hallelujah. Thank you that you take us into wealthy places. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wealthy places. Wealthy places. Well, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Psalm 65 says, The Lord, He has crowned our year with goodness. And it says, Your paths, His paths drip with fatness. Hallelujah. Where fatness there is abundance. Hallelujah. His paths drop with, hallelujah, with abundance. I thank you, Father, that you direct us in those paths where we walk in abundance. In our job, hallelujah, abundance with wisdom, abundance, hallelujah, hallelujah, abundance in knowledge, uh, abundance in our workplace, abundance in our finances, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Mm. You're working. You're working. You're always at work. Hallelujah. You're always at work. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 And have, have an expectancy. Have an expectancy that he's always working. That he's always working on your behalf. Hallelujah. He's always working on your behalf. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, that just makes me just cast every care off. <laughs> when I know he's working on my behalf. Hallelujah. 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 It has to do with your children. Let him work. Let him work, on, let him work on your behalf. Hallelujah. It has to do with that, that, that boss or, or that person that you're working with that you, you're, you just don't get along with. Just let the Lord work. Hallelujah. Let the Lord work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Father, we glorify you. Thank you for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Give him a shout of praise. God is good. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Before you see them, why don't you just greet one another and welcome to Heritage of Faith. Tell them as good as to see them. Hallelujah. God is good. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. I'm going to invite Jeremiah Emmanuel up, and then uh, he's going he's gonna to do our tithes and offerings tonight. So give Jeremiah a hand. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, Jeremiah. All right. Praise the Lord. Oh, you can hear me. Good deal. All right. Well, as we prepare our giving tonight, um, <clears throat> just spend some time with the Lord earlier, just seeking after him because that's, that's what we should always do in everything we're going to do, right? He's the author and finisher of our faith. We want to know what he says about everything, about everything. So um, what we're going to look at is uh, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5, which is not ordinarily used as, you know, an offering message, but uh, we'll go with it and see where we end up. All right, so 2 Corinthians 10, 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Verse 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So going after, over that, I know a lot of us have heard this passage of scripture before when it comes to spiritual warfare, praying things out, but we've got to understand when we're bringing an offering to the house of God, to the, anointing, to the anointed one and his anointing, we're doing spiritual warfare with our money. Praise the Lord. We're taking ground for the kingdom through our money. So when we go back through this and we look at verse 3, we see, For though we walk in the flesh, meaning we're here in this world doing worldly things, we do not war after the flesh. Meaning if a battle's come up, we're not going to fight down here. We're going to take this up to the level where we belong. There's no higher place in the throne room when it comes to anything we do 
especially with our finances. So going back through verse 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Now this word for pulling down, that's a word of force. That's a violent thing we do. When I see something and I'm going to pull it down, I'm not just going to be like, oh, okay, let's pull this thing down. We're going to do it mightily. Get down from there. Pulling it down. And this word here for strongholds in this verse 4 stands for something built like a fortress or a castle. So I don't know about you guys, but I've never seen a castle grow up overnight. I can't just go down the street and, oh, look, there's a castle that went through yesterday. So some of these things have been built up strongholds in our life and our finances. We've had generations upon generations upon generation of poverty run through our family, lack, different things. So what this is saying is when you take this up to the throne room level of dealing with your finances, no matter how long that thing's been established, you're pulling it down. It doesn't matter how strong it is. And then verse 5, casting down imaginations. Now that word imaginations is calculating your own plans, your different way of saying, you know what, it's just not in the budget for us to tithe or give an offering this week. We'll, we'll get it next time. That's bringing down an imagination. Bringing that thing down from the place where it shouldn't be because it's trying to bring itself against the knowledge of God. Because it says in the word, our God supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And finally, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Bringing everything that's going on financially, every bill that's come up, everything that's got to be paid right now, it's not going to bring itself against Christ. The anointed one and his anointing is more than enough for anything we need. So, Father, we just thank you tonight as we prepare our giving to you. We thank you, Lord, that you help us to bring this offering to you in peace. We just speak the very peace of God in Jesus' name over all of our finances. We thank you that your peace means nothing missing, nothing broken in Jesus' name. So every place that's broken or missing right now in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, that a harvest is coming. We send forth our ministering angels to the north, south, east, and west to gather in that harvest, to bring it unto us, to bring it unto us by men giving into our bosom, Lord. We plead the blood of Jesus over our finances, and we thank you, Lord, that we are whole in every single area of our financial offerings, Lord, every single area of our financial giving. And Lord, we thank you for the reminder tonight to pray in the Holy Ghost in regards to our finances, Lord. We thank you that there's not one person on earth who knows finances better than you. So we receive that wisdom, nothing wavering right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jeremiah. Give Jeremiah a hand for that offering message, man. Appreciate you guys. And while they're receiving the offering, just a few announcements. Uh, this coming Friday for the young adults, um, they'll be meeting up here at the church at uh, 7 o'clock, and it's game night, so bring a snack, invite a friend, and that's the 18 to 30-somethings. And um, also another announcement, Dr. Savelle will be with us this Sunday, so uh, I'm looking forward to uh, it'll be his first time here with us after the first of the year. Uh, and so uh, getting away, getting refreshed, and, um, and so looking forward to hearing uh, what God's placed on his heart for us as a church this coming Sunday. And also, if you've been fairly new here at Heritage, our next Connect class will be February 11th at 4 p.m. You can either sign up online or you can sign up in the lobby, uh, and that'll go for, we'll have a couple hours with my wife and I, and then we'll have dinner, a meal together, and pray over each one of you as you get connected with us and get to know you. So other than that, you ready to get in the Word? Amen. If you have a Bible, let's turn to John chapter 10, and I'm going to continue on this topic that we've been on, uh, hearing, uh, hearing God. Hallelujah. I love the Word of God. Always approach the Word with an attitude of humility. Always approach the Word with being ready to hear, ready to receive. You know, because... His, this, is, this is his word speaking to us. You know, so we talk about hearing God. Everything stems from the word of God. You want to hear from God? Start in, start in the book. Start in the Bible. And, and even, even if it's something that you, it's new to you, whatever, when you get into this book, ask God to reveal himself to you through it. Ask him to reveal his ways through it. Ask him how to reveal his responses to things through it. 
how he re would respond to a situation, how he would deal with a situation, how, how what would take place. And it's all going to be found through his word. And it's as you understand the voice of this word, the next thing you know, you're going to start hearing his voice for your personal life. But also, whatever you're going to hear is going to line up with this word. It's not going to be opposed to the word. It's going to have to line up with this word. God, God wants us to hear his voice. Why? Because he wants to direct our path. He's a good shepherd. You know, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leads me, right? He leads me. Say, he leads me. He leads me. Man, get a, get a hold of that. Whether you're here or watching by way of internet, get a hold of the fact that he wants to lead you through life. He wants to lead you and help navigate you through wherever you're at right now. He wants to navigate you in your marriage. He wants to navigate you as you raise your children. He wants to navigate as, as, as in your ministry, whatever. They ask. He wants to navigate. He, he, wants, he wants the steering wheel. He, he wants the steering wheel in your life. What is, but what is really the, the steering wheel of our life, so to speak, is going to come when we follow his voice, when we follow his direction, when we follow his word, okay? In John chapter 10, and this has been our, our theme scripture for this series, in verse 3, it says, The watchman opens the door for this man, and the sheep listen to his voice and heed it. And he calls his own sheep by name and brings and leads them out. When he has brought his own sheep outside... He walks on before them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to know his voice. Hallelujah. You're his sheep. He's the shepherd and you know his voice. Don't ever say, I can't hear God. Don't ever say, if you, if you in the natural, you're, you feel that way, well, I just don't hear God's voice. Stop saying that. Just say, I always hear his voice. I always hear the voice of the good shepherd. I always hear the voice of the good shepherd. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Let's go to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Why is it important to hear God? Why is it important to hear what this word has to say? Look at verse 24. Matthew 7, verse 24. It says, Therefore, whoever, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken unto him a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that hears these sayings of mine and does them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Now get this. Here's, we see two different men here in this story. And they both heard. One's not getting shortchanged by the other. It's not like one was in one was in this environment and, and one was in this other environment. No, they were in the same environment. And they were both were hearing the same things. They both heard the same things, but one was successful and one wasn't successful. You see what I'm saying? So, so here, we got to gauge this because we understand that if we hear God, His intent is to lead me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. He wants to lead me into, into success. You know, we, he, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. That's His desire, right? We, we know that's His desire for His, His creation, His people. And so here, the sayings were brought to these two men to bring success to them. But only one of them was successful. Both of them heard. You know, it wasn't like, okay, they went their separate ways and, and one experienced a worse storm than the other. No, they experienced the same storm. So they heard the same thing and they all experienced the same storm. So what's the problem? One, one was built upon a rock and one was built upon the sand. What was the, what was the, the, the difference? is the first one it says he heard it and he did it. 
He heard it and he did it. So the wise man is the one that not just heard the sayings, but did the sayings. And he was considered a wise man, right? And then you had the man that built his house on the sand. He was someone that just heard the word. So it's not just to be enough to hear the word, but we have to do the word. It's not just enough talking about hearing from God, but are we open to do what he wants us to do? Because right. see, this is, this is where success is. And, and I, I believe this is a lot of difference between successful people and unsuccessful people. I, I, you know, and from a business standpoint and natural standpoint, what is the, what is the biggest gap in, in, in the world in, when it comes to leadership? It's, it's, it's doing what you know to do. That's the biggest guy. That's the biggest guy. Like, you know, I don't really have to tell, you know, how, how, you know, Cassie, you know, how, how am I going to become healthy? It, it, it's no, no one, it, it's not, it, it's a no brainer. It, it's like, we all know what to do. To become healthy. We, we all know for the most part, right? We, we know, no, I'm not going to have to, you know, if you want strong muscles, I'm not going to have to tell you, okay, all right, well, if you just, you know, you got two men, if you sit down and watch TV all day long and sit on the couch and eat potato chips, you know what? You're going to be strong one day. It's not going to happen. It's, it, it's pretty much, a, a, you know, you're going to need to lift some weight. You're going to have to put some stress on that muscle. That muscle is going to have to get ripped and it's going to have to have to build back up. It's going to get ripped and it's going to be built back up again. So it, we, we all know that, right? And so it's not like I'm telling you anything new. So the thing is, is I don't need to tell you that, right? So, so we all know that. So it's what we are doing with what we know that is the common dom- denominator in our life. That, that's, that's, the, that's the common denominator within our life. So successful Christians, or if I'm going to be a successful believer, I need to monitor not just my hearing, but my doing. My hearing and my doing. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 2. Proverbs chapter 2. Thank you, Father. Proverbs chapter 2, verse, man, hallelujah, so much good stuff here. I'll just do verse 6 for time. Um, For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. So if we look at the two men, wisdom came out of his mouth for two people, Right. Right? Wisdom, wisdom comes from it. The Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. So maybe the wisdom was how to build a house in a storm. And the one had all the wood and did something about it. The other just, well, I want to bypass that. And, you know, I'm just going to prop everything up. How about that? So he heard wisdom out of his, the Lord comes wisdom and it says out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. So when we talk about those two people in Matthew seven, wisdom was something they both heard. So it's not just enough to have wisdom. It's great to, to, to gain wisdom. It's, It's great to gain knowledge and understanding. But the question is, what are you doing with it? What are you doing with the wisdom? What are you doing with the, the messages that you hear? What are you doing with the, the things that God is speaking to in your prayer? What are you doing with that? Because wisdom is coming from his mouth. He, he's not going to give you anything stupid. He's not going to give you anything that's going to make you like, uh, look, uh, uh, you know, look like a fool, become a fool. He, he, he's, you know, because he, the other one built his house upon, he was the foolish man. He built his house upon the sand. See, God gave him the wisdom to keep him from becoming a foolish man. So how many of us sometimes are going around with the wisdom in here, but yet yet we're fools because we're not doing what we know to do? So hearing God, out of his mouth comes wisdom. Let's go to um, Proverbs 4. Thank you, Father. Verse 5. Get wisdom... Get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, forsake wisdom not, 
and she shall preserve thee. Love her and she shall keep thee. Yeah. See, this is all talking about wisdom. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not. Don't let go of wisdom. Why? Because wisdom will preserve you. Love wisdom. You know what? Wisdom's going to keep you. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Man, how many things did I experience because I didn't love wisdom? Right. <laughs> See, wisdom wanted to keep me, but, <laughs> but, but because I wasn't loving wisdom, I, I couldn't be kept. <laughs> Hallelujah. A lot of grunts in the place, amen. Um, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Hallelujah. See, I, I, have, to, I have to understand wisdom because understanding wisdom is, I've got to, in all you're getting, get, under, get uh, understanding. Why? Because it's in the understanding I can get results. Verse 8, exalt her. Exalt wisdom, and wisdom will promote you. She shall bring thee to honor when you do embrace her. Wow. Wisdom shall give to thee a head of ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall wisdom deliver to you. Hear, O, o my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of your life shall be many. Now get that. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of your life shall be many. Man, what could wisdom change? What could wisdom rearrange? What could wisdom do physically, emotionally, financially, spirit, soul? and What could wisdom do? Man, here it says, man, my life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. See, these are things that's coming from his mouth. These are his sayings. He, I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened. And when you runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Yes. Man, wisdom. Keep it. It's his life. This life. Wisdom. We, we need this wisdom. Now, his, you know, understand, and without going and showing some other scriptures, understanding his word is wisdom. Yes. His word is wisdom. We can look at, look at it like this way. Verse 5, get the word. Get understanding. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Don't, don't let go of the word. Why? Because it will preserve you. Love the word, and the word will keep you. Why? The word is the principal thing. Therefore, get the word, and with all you're getting, get more understanding of the word. Exalt the word, and the word will promote you. The word will bring you the honor. And when you, when you embrace the word, the word shall give thee a head of ornament of grace, and the word will give you a crown of glory will deliver to you. Hear, O son, my word, and the years of your life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of the word. I have led thee in right paths. Hallelujah. Man, this whole, this whole chapter is great. You know, he goes and talks about attend to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from you, but keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life unto those and find them and health to all your flesh. Yes. But understand this. It's not just, it's, it's life in, in to all those that find it. It's health to all your flesh. Incline your ear. You know, put them in the midst of your heart. But it has to go to beyond just being in your heart. Yes. It has to get into your heart in a place where it becomes a part of you to where you act on it. His word is like, remember the two, the two men, they both heard wisdom, but what are you doing with it? What are you doing with it? Hearing God is about not just hearing, but it's doing. Hallelujah. Now, just for some simple illustrations, who's here ever been pulled over for speeding? Anyone? Why'd you, why'd you get a ticket? Because you weren't doing the word. You got a ticket because you weren't doing the word. What was the word? 35 mile an hour speed limit. Because you weren't doing that word, you got a ticket. See, see, how many things aren't we doing that's giving us some tickets that we wish we didn't have to pay? 
You know, I, you know, just you know, we just finished Christmas and and you know a little while ago, and so so think about you know as a as a parent and you have little children, you you somehow it, it looked good on the shelf when you bought it, and and there was this idea you're going to bring this this thing home, and you know what you decided you know at midnight on Christmas Eve that you were going to put this thing together. And then when you took it out of the box, you didn't realize that it was a thousand and one pieces. And you're looking at this and you need like a, someone with an engineering degree to put, put this thing together, you know. And, and, and so you're, you're looking at this and, and, and you, know, you know, if you're a guy, you know, you kind of just like toss it in the wind. And hey, let me just look at the picture. You just let me look at the picture. And, and you end up with pieces left over and, and you wonder why things were backwards and things were upside down. Why? Because you weren't looking at, you weren't doing the word. You, you weren't you weren't doing the word, you know, you know, I, I'm not I don't want to go back there too often to here with with like eating right nutrition training and 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 and, and being healthy. You know, I, I you know, but, but the thing is, is 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 we're not getting the results that we want naturally, ultimately, because we're not doing what we know to do. Right. Yeah. And so because we're not doers of the word, we we have to become doers of the word if we're going to enter into success that God has for us. Right. So let's look at James chapter one. Uh, James chapter one. Hallelujah. Look look at verse twenty one. Hallelujah. I'm going to read the Amplified. It says, so get rid of all uncleanness and the rampant outgrowth of wickedness and in a humble spirit receive and welcome the word which implanted in and rooted into your hearts contains the power to save your soul. Man, I love that. So get rid of this. Let go of this and receive. Man, just, just humility. That's what it takes. Well, here, you want to, if you want to hear from God, it's, it takes humility. Because you have to quiet yourself enough to put yourself in a position to hear. Stop being busy. Just rest, okay? That's, that's what this scripture do. And receive the word. Because the word that you're going to get, it says it has the power. Contains the power to save your soul. Now, it doesn't say it saves your soul. It says it contains the power. See, a lot of people like, like to look at church. If I go to church, it's just osmosis. What I hear is all of a sudden just going to get on me. And just because I was in church, all of a sudden, I mean, I'm a Christian. I mean, look, I heard the word today. Now, now the word, it has the power. It contains the power to save your soul, but it's not what saves your soul. For instance, I could, I could talk to you, Adrian, talk to you about salvation and come to you and give you the salvation message. I just gave you the word that has the power to, change, to save your soul, but it profits you nothing until you confess it and believe it in your heart for yourself. Yeah. So it contains the power to save your soul, but it doesn't save your soul until you do something with what I just told you right. and what I just told the word to you, right? So we have, to, we have to understand this word is the catalyst for change. It's the catalyst for whatever I'm believing for. Whatever you're needing, you're, it's the catalyst. Yes. It, it is the answer to everything that you need. But, it, but it's not just, it doesn't just stop with the answer. We have to keep reading. Because in my Bible here, it says, but... But be doers of the word. So it's not just receiving that word into your heart. But it's being doer. There, there's, a, I, there's a lot of, I like to say, spiritually word or say or word overweight people. But yet their lives haven't changed. Because they, 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 they need this part. But be doers of the word. Obey the message. And don't be merely listeners to it. Betraying yourself. So, so if I just hear the word and I don't do it, he calls it here, I'm betraying myself. And that's what, that happens a lot because what happens is when it didn't work the first time or the second time or the third time, what happens? People walk away and get offended at God. But you know what they're doing? It's, it's this scripture. Right? They're, betraying them. They're, they're betraying themselves. 
Verse 23, for if anyone only listens to the word without obeying it and being a doer of it, he is like a man who looks carefully at his own natural face in a mirror. For he thoughtfully observes himself and then goes off and promptly forgets what he was like. Man, it means you look in this word and the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and he's saying, Justin, you know what? You need to change your attitude about that. You know what? You're, you know, you, you, you need to, you know... You, you need to see that differently because that's my, what my word says. So I'm seeing that in the word and I'm seeing the adjustments that I need to make. Um, you know, um, but what happens is I go away from the word and I don't make any adjustments. And that's where a lot of people live is, man, the word spoke to them. God spoke to them. God, God did something, said something to them that would totally take their life in a whole other direction, but it couldn't go there because, because they stopped looking at the mirror and they started looking at other people's opinions, what other people think. Yeah. Hallelujah. Verse 24, for he thoughtfully observes himself, then goes off and promptly forget what he was like. But he who looks carefully into the faultless law, the law of liberty. Man, it's a law of liberty. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's a law of liberty yeah. and is faithful to it and perseveres in looking into it, being not a heedless li listener who forgets, but an active doer who shall be blessed in his doing. And Amplified says, in his life of obedience. He shall be blessed in his doing. So the blessing doesn't come just from hearing the word. The blessing comes when the word and my action comes together. Because you know really what your action is, is really actually you releasing your faith in what you heard. Yes. Think about it. A lot of times we like to talk, talk about faith as it pertains to what we're speaking. And that's true. Yeah. But faith pleases God. Yes. Now, if you go on and you read James chapter, uh, James chapter 3, 4, and it talks about Abraham. I love it. It says, it says when Abraham's faith came to finality... So, so it wasn't just Abraham saying the right things, but it, when, he, when he actions with Isaac, those actions that took place, it changed everything. So, so part, of, part of our faith coming finality isn't just in our confession, but our faith comes to finality when we're acting on what the word is telling us to do. Hallelujah. But doing the word is a choice. It's a choice to do this word. Man, you know what? There's times when I've not wanted to do it. You know what? Because I didn't feel in my heart that that person needed to be forgiven. Naturally. Because I deserve to be offended. Just being honest. I'm just saying there's times I haven't wanted to do the word. But realize when you do the word, it's love, liberty. But it's a choice. It's a choice to walk in love. But, you know, but people realize that's doing the word. Yeah. Being a doer of the word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. It's a choice. Let's go to Deuteronomy 30. Verse 19. Hallelujah. Verse 19 says, I call heaven and earth to witness this day against you that I have set before you life and death, the blessings and the curses. What, what did James just tell us? It said that we would be blessed in our doing, right? Right? But here he says, I set before you life and death, the blessings and the curses. Therefore, choose life that you and your descendants may live. What are you choosing? See, you have to choose to be a doer of the word. Just like you can choose death or you can choose life. You can choose blessing or you can choose cursing. But ultimately what it comes down to, it becomes a choice of am I going to do the word? 
Am I going to do the word? Am I going to do the word? Hallelujah. You know, I, I, people say, well, you know, we're not under the law anymore. And I understand, I understand what they're saying. I, I understand the, the, the premise of that because we couldn't fulfill the law in ourselves. I understand that. But also understand that he wrote the law in our hearts now. Yes. The law just changed positions. Yes. So, so does that mean that um, I, I can, because we're not under law, I can commit adultery now? Does that, does that mean I can, I can put other gods before me now because I'm not under the law? See, it's stupid. So, but it's doing the word. See, see, God, see, I look at the Ten Commandments not as things that I don't have to do anymore. I, I look at the Ten Commandments as parameters that's going to bring a successful life to me. God's not get, get, giving directions here to the children of the Israel. I mean, the, the Israelites to give them a bad day. No, he's telling them these are parameters that's going to bring success. Yes, yes. Now, it's when you think that you do those things that make you righteous, that's where you get off. Because you can't be righteous in yourself. But understand now I live out of my reborn nature and the, the law is written on my heart. And it's out of that understanding that produces and causes me to walk in a greater level of holiness. Because I'm not living according to myself anymore, but according to the Spirit of God. That's a whole other message. So, so get back to choice here. I set before you life and death, blessings and cursing, therefore choose life. So doing the word is going to be a choice. Now look at the next verse, because a lot of times people don't read this next verse. And that you may love the Lord your God and obey his voice. So it's a choice of life and death. It's a choice of blessing and cursing. And it, and it tells us that this choice is not just for you, but for your descendants after you. So, so believe it or not, folks, the choices you're making today are going to affect generations after you. That you and your descendants may live and may love the Lord your God and obey his voice and cling to him and cling to him. For he is your life and the length of your days that you may dwell in the land which the Lord your swore to give, swore to, give to your fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Hallelujah. Why do you obey his voice? Because he is your life. Hallelujah. He is the length of your days so that you can dwell in the land that he promised to give. That's why we follow his voice. That's why we become doers of his word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Love the Lord. Love the Lord. Obey his voice. Now, there's a word that I want to use as I try to start to close that I don't use every day. I know you don't use it every day. Maybe Stuart uses it some, but maybe he says, or Isabel says it to him. Stuart, have you hearkened to my instructions today? Have you, have you hearkened to my, have you hearkened to my instructions? Jessica has Jeremiah hearkened to your instructions, and this is not a word we normally use too often. But bottom line, the, the word, um, the, the word hearken. Let me give you a couple of definitions, biblical definitions. One, it's it's to diligently discern. It's to attentively listen, listen and respond with an action. Or hear and obey. Uh, the the picture, the metaphor, the picture that it gives in the Hebrew is if um, <laughs> it's interesting. In the Hebrew, it gives as, as an animal would perk up its ears. That's actually the the picture it gives. So it's kind of like squirrel, you know, it's like, <laughs> squirrel. Yeah, you know what? Because it means you're you're hearkening me. You're you're attentive. You're you're ready to hear. You're you're ready to listen. But it's not just ready to listen, but you're ready to listen with the intent of doing what you're hearing. It's, 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 it's almost like the term waiting. It's, it's not sitting back passively, but it's aggressively, offensively waiting for something to happen. That I'm, it's about to happen any minute. I'm about to, that God is about to show up any moment. I'm waiting on the Lord. It's not sitting back, well, I'm waiting, no. And, but hearkening is the same thing. It's, it's, it's aggressively, attentively, diligently putting yourself in a position to hear, but also diligently to do. So that's what the word hearken means. Let's go to Genesis 3. But for just the sake of just easily to remember, hearkening is hearing and obeying. It's not just hearing, but hearing and obeying. 
But it's what you choose. Remember, hearing and doing is a choice. So it's what you are hearkening to that will determine your success in life. Hearkening. Verse 17. And this is, this is in, excuse me, in success or in failures. Hallelujah. It says, and unto Adam, he said, because you hearkened unto the voice of your wife and you've eaten of the tree of what I commanded thee, saying, thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. So Adam had a choice on who to hearken to. He could hearken to God that said, don't eat, don't eat of it. Or he could hearken unto his wife's voice that said, do eat it. And the choice he made brought failure. See, what you choose to hearken to. And we see this through, throughout the word of God. Whatever you're hearing and obeying, like I said, is negative or positive. It's, it's, not, it's not just hearkening to God only and that brings success. No, what are you hearkening, what are you hearkening that's negative, that you might hearken to negatively? See, there's things that I heard and did because I wanted to do them or I followed someone else's idea and it didn't work out so good. Everyone tried to get you in some, some of those uh, uh, get rich quick, um, you know, things, you know, and I said, all I need is $1,000 down and you're going to be rich. Yeah, you, we, we, you see, you, 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 yeah, we've all been there, right? And so, and so anyway, you're, you're in these things, and so, so anyway, but, but, it's, but it's like, did God tell you to do it? I'm not saying all the things right there are wrong. The thing is, is you did it because it sounded good, not because God told you to do it. Okay, because I don't want to, there's some good, there's good financial things out there, so I don't want to, but, but really, we can go throughout the word and see this. Second Kings, we can look at Naaman, when he dipped in the river seven times, what did he do? He hearkened to the word that came from God through Gehazi. Genesis chapter 22, he told Abraham, go into a land that I'll show you. Abraham had to hear and obey. You look at Genesis 19, you know, Lot had to hearken to the instructions, but the wife didn't hearken. And what did she, she turned around and became a pillar of salt. So what you hearken to has everything to do with your success and your failure. John chapter five, about the, the, the guy at the, um, at the um, pool. He, Jesus said, pick up your bed and walk. He could have sat there. He didn't have to get up. He could have sat there for another, another 30 years. Second Kings chapter 8, you know, uh, they're having the famine. He said, by this time tomorrow. You know, and one guy didn't believe it. One guy didn't hearken to it. And so he said, well, you're not, not going to taste of it. What happened when it, when it happened? Everyone, <laughs> the doors busted open. They trampled him. He didn't get to taste it. Why? Because he, he didn't listen to what God was saying. About, about this in, in Luke chapter 5, uh, Jesus says to Peter, let down your nets. And he said, well, nevertheless, at your word, I'll let down the net. He hearkened partially. And that's why, and that's why he went back to him, kneeled down, and he says, I'm a sinful man. Why? Because Jesus said, let down your nets. And he just let down a net. About John chapter 21, verse 6, what did Jesus say? Throw out, throw out the net on the right side of the boat. Oh, God, come on. I don't want to face the sun. How about the left side? No, Jesus said the right side. So, see, hearkening, we see it throughout the Word. I could, every chat, I mean, there's tons of examples because, because your success doesn't come down to how much wisdom you, you have. Your success comes down to what are you doing with the wisdom that you have because it will determine your present, and it will determine your future. Let's go to Isaiah 48, and I'll close with this. Isaiah 48. I might have one more scripture. We'll see. Isaiah 48. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Where did we start, Lord? Man, thank you, Father. Hmm. Let's do verse 14. I'm going to read in the Amplified. It says, assemble yourselves, all of you, and hear. So what is it? he wants to come together, and I want you to hear. Who among you has foretold these things? 
The Lord has loved him. He will do his pleasure in purpose on Babylon. His arm will be against the Chaldeans. I even I have foretold it. Yes, I have called him. I have brought him. And the Lord shall make his way prosperous. Come near to me and listen to this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning, from the time that it happened. I was there, and now the Lord God has sent his spirit in and with me. I love that. Come near to me and listen to this. You know what? God wants you to come near and listen to him. Man. Come near and listen to him. He says, I have not spoken in secret from the beginning. Man, it just lets me know just... From the beginning, he, he, all, he wants to speak to his people. That's his desire. Mm, thank you, Father. And now the Lord God has sent his spirit in and with me. Man, but how much for you and I? He sent his spirit in with us, the Holy Spirit. Yes. Now let's look at verse 17. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel... I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit. Hallelujah. I am the Lord God that teaches you to profit. He, so he wants them to come near, Cassie. Why? Because he's saying, I can profit you. Yeah. Yeah. Justin, I want you to come near because I can, pro I can profit you. Man, I, can bring, I, I, can, I want to show you things that I can show you other companies you can get connected with. Mm -hmm. To sell more windows than you ever thought you could sell. Bring it on. Bring it on. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is in every area. I, I, come near. Why? Why does he want you to? Because he wants you to profit. He's not a God of lack. He's a God of profit. Hallelujah. Now, what does the word profit here mean? It means to ascend. It means to increase. It means to be benefited. It means to be useful. It means to be good. It means to be enlarged. It means to, be, to expand. Hallelujah. So come near to me. Because, why? Because it's good. Come near to me because I want to benefit you. Come near to me because I want to take you higher. Come near to me because I want to increase you. Come near to me because I want to enlarge you and expand you. Hallelujah. I am the Lord your God who teaches you. What, out of, how does it teach? Wis, out of his mouth comes wisdom. So he's going to teach you what wisdom, right? To do what? To profit you. So he's going to give you wisdom to profit you. Then who leads you in the way that you should go. Hallelujah. He knows the path for you not to take. You know what? He knows the relationships you don't need to have. He knows the business partners you don't need to have. He knows the people you don't need to have working for you. He, he knows the way that you should go. Amen. Hallelujah. And I love this. Verse 18. Oh, that you had hearkened. May I just sense the heart of the Father, right? Oh, if you had just hearkened. May I just see God just stepping back and said, oh, if you had just hearkened. I, man, I had, I saw this, but oh, if you had just hearkened. If you had just hearkened to my commandment, my word or my wisdom, then your peace and prosperity would have been like a flowing river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. Oh, if you had hearkened to me. If you, could, if you had just done what I told you to do, oh man, your peace and prosperity would have been like a flowing river. And I like the idea of a flowing river. And your righteous as of the ways of the sea. Verse 19. And your offspring would have been like the sand. And your descendants like the offspring of the sea. And their name would not be cut off or destroyed before me. Oh, if you would just hearken to me. It's not just having wisdom. But it's doing the wisdom you have. Because it's, it's when you do that wisdom... When you walk in that wisdom, you know, some people, you know, they've been in this for a number of years now and talking to a lot of people one-on-one -on -one and, and seeing situations and walking through situations and giving people wisdom. 
that's probably one of the most, I guess, disheartening things sometimes as a pastor is seeing people go through things that they don't need to go through. And knowing that you said this and it's like, they just couldn't, couldn't hook up with it or couldn't connect to it. And even though it might have been a, a demotion or, or something, they take a step backwards. If they could just held on and understood what I was trying to communicate. Man. See, God's out for your profit. And he's giving wisdom out of his mouth. His word's given wisdom. And all he's saying, oh, if you had just hearkened. Oh, man, if you could just do this word. If you could just do this. If you could just make these adjustments. Man. Be, it, your life would change. Proverbs 1, and I'll close with this. Proverbs 1. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for your word. Hallelujah. We open ourselves up for wisdom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Verse 29. For they that hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Actually, verse 28. Then shall they call upon me, but I'll not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Why? Because they hated knowledge and they did not choose the fear of the Lord. So what was God saying? I, you're not going to find Why? Because I already told you what you needed to know. But you, re, you, you rejected it. Why? Because you hated knowledge. So when you don't do wisdom, you're actually hating wisdom. When you don't, when you don't know what, to, when you don't know, when you don't do what you know to do, you're hating knowledge, and you're not choosing the fear of the Lord. Meaning, you're not respecting His viewpoint. You're not honoring His wisdom. Verse thirty: They would not, they would none of my counsel, and they despised all my reproof. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. You see, when we don't do wisdom. We end up eating the fruit of our own choices. Wow. That's, that's rough. And you know, time, there's times where I've had to eat the fruit of my choices. And I like what Jesse DePlanis said, say, you know, sin makes you stay longer you want to stay, pay more than you want to pay. <laughs> but you know what? It's, yeah, God will do miracles. God will restore. God will turn it around. And I know I, he will. It might take a little bit longer than you might want it to take, though. You know, forgiveness is instantaneous, but restoration is a process. Hallelujah. Therefore shall they eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with the, their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them. Man, so that, was, that was the two men at the beginning. The wise, and the, the wise and the foolish. One heard and did, the one just heard. And it says this, for the turning of the way the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkens unto me, whoever hearkens unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. King James, I mean, Amplified says, for the backsliding of the simple shall slay them and the careless ease of a self-confident fool shall destroy them. That's what a fool is, it's self-confidence. That's what the Amplified translates it as. Self-confidence is meaning, I can do it myself. I don't need to do the word. But it says it will destroy them. But whoso hearkens to me wisdom shall dwell securely and in confident trust and shall be quiet without fear or dread of evil. So if I'm not without fear or dread of evil, that means I'm in faith. So when I hearken to him, I'll dwell safely and I'll rest in faith. Because I'm not all been in fear, then I'm in faith, right? Yes. Hallelujah. You receive this word tonight. Yes, sir. You feel challenged by this word. I do. Yes. I do. I'm preaching to myself. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've, uh, I've, you know, experienced a lot of things in my life and a lot, of, a lot of breakthroughs, a lot of amazing things. But this is a constant thing that we have to, you know, renew our mind to. Yes. Hearing God. It's not just hearing, but it's hearing and doing. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. And Father, I thank you for just a hunger 
a hunger for your word, a hunger to hear your voice, but also a courage to obey it. I declare that over every single person in here and watching by way of internet tonight. Father, I thank you that they have a hunger to hear, but a courage to obey. A hunger to hear and a courage to obey. And I thank you, Father, as we align ourselves with wisdom, I thank you that we will receive the fruit of wisdom. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. That we are ones that hearken to your voice. We hearken to your word. Hallelujah. I speak life over this congregation. Life over every single person here watching by way of internet. I speak forth life. I speak forth abundance. I speak forth prosperity. I speak forth freedom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for your goodness. Hallelujah. Lord, and I just thank you for forgiving us when we haven't done what we know to do. I repent. I repent, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you that you fill every heart. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you for your goodness. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. No condemnation. No condemnation about past failures. No condemnation. No condemnation about where you're at right now. No condemnation. We have not been given. Hallelujah. Spirit of fear. Not have condemnation over our lives. Thank you, Father, for causing us to walk. Walk in a way, Father, where we do wisdom. And it will cause us to profit in every way. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, thank you, Lord. Ah, that's good. Do you have anything in that? You good? You good? Hallelujah. Mm, Cassie, you good? Mm, thank you, Father. Mm. Eric and Nikki, you got anything? <laughs> They're pastor friends of ours from Michigan. Hallelujah. I thought you did. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Just because today I heard <laughs> not to, and in fact, that's what the, the word that I feel like I need to say is, a lot of times you'll question whether you've actually got the wisdom of God, whether you've heard. And I don't know if it's somebody in here um, or somebody watching online, but you've heard. You've heard the wisdom of God. And, um, and you need to be obedient to it. You just need to be obedient to it and stop questioning it. I'm not saying it's a matter of life and death, but I know in cases where it has been. So there's a seriousness when you know that you've heard and you kind of wait on it because you're like, well, I'm not sure if that's God. I'm just not sure. And I'm just not sure. And I'm just not sure. And it becomes disobedience. And there won't be profit. And like I said, I'm not saying it's a life and death situation, but you won't get his best, whatever that means. Mm. Thank you, Father. So I'm just saying I know you've heard and you need to step out. Mm. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. 
Everyone stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Thank you for the spirit of wisdom, the Holy Spirit, the revealer of truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Walk us through, Father. Walk us through. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Father. Galatians 5, uh, 1, 15 says, And when he who had chosen and set me apart, Paul's talking about himself, even before I was born and had called me by his grace and saw fit and was pleased to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen. So here, what was Paul getting? He received wisdom about what he was called to do. The next part says, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. So part of hearing is and doing is not conferring with what, is your, what does your flesh think about it? <laughs> but what was God saying? What's God saying? And then realize he'll work out all the details after that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Mm. Man, such a... Man. His presence is so strong. Hallelujah. 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 Hmm. Oh, thank you, Father. Mm.
Thank you, Father. Oh. Hmm. Thank you for your presence, Father. Thank you that we go in this peace. This presence continues to surround us. Go with us tonight. I thank you for manifesting your glory in this place on a continued basis. Thank you for manifesting the glory of God as we gather on Sunday morning. And that glory will continue to increase. That glory will continue to expand. That glory will continue to fill this place and fill our community. Thank you for the glory. Thank you for your glory, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. If you want to stay, you can stay. Other than that, you're dismissed. Hallelujah.